Uh, so Rob came to me a while ago, and when he told me what his what was wrong with him, I actually didn't want to touch him. I was like. I don't know if I can help you. I honestly don't know I can help you. Uh, but as an exercise rehabilitation specialist, what I actually focus on is actually helping people with the exercise thing. So when you start looking at back pain, a lot of people go, you can't exercise. Because the reality is with a lot of these conditions, mainstream exercise of what you think of exercise and personal training probably is actually going to make the situation a lot worse or cause problems. And if you send someone with a number of these issues to say a boot camp or to a personal trainer, they're actually going to end up back with the allied health professional in more problems, with more problems than what they started with. Okay, so as an exercise rehabilitation specialist, what we actually do is we work with people like this, and there are people in the room with these issues. I know that because I've treated some of you, and I've actually helped fix a number of you as well. What we do is we actually use exercise techniques that actually stabilise, desensitise, and actually rehab the body. Okay, and that's really what we're looking at doing in exercise rehab. So when people get back pain, they'll tend to go to a professional and receive some sort of treatment. Now, I can live in this world as a remedial massage therapist, but really what I'm trying to do is choose not to. I'm quite happy to let the physios and the osteos and the chiros do all of that hard work in actually treating the person and taking all the risk. And really, the big thing that we do is we actually form the bridge between the allied health professional and normal functioning life. Okay, so what happens is someone will go to an allied health professional in pain and they will go in there and they'll get treated and they usually go in there with a healthcare type of response and when I talk about a healthcare attitude response what happens is they go there because they're in pain and they get treated until they're not in pain and then they go oh, I'm all good I don't need to do anything anymore and then four or five weeks later they're in pain again and they're back and they get on what I call them the, the um, maintenance roundabout merry-go-round Okay, so they're constantly getting treated and they think if they can see their physio or their osteo every four to six to eight weeks and that'll keep them going that they're actually in a good place. Okay, well my argument is that's not actually a good place to be in. Okay, and everyone actually has the right and deserves to live pain free. So what will tend to happen is someone will go here, then what will they'll get treated, that person goes and lives everyday life, then they go back here, then they go live everyday life. And what we do is we actually create this bridge. So we do this really through a three-step program, okay? We focus on neuromuscular activation and programming. We focus on developing functional units and activation of those functional units of the body and then actually getting them functioning correctly with functional movements. So to explain this in a little bit more detail, what happens is when someone gets injured, usually you get some sort of dysfunction in the body. So when we're looking at back pain, there's always a why. Okay, and this is where I guess I like to really work, is I like to look at the why. So for example, if someone's got sciatic pain, a lot of the time they will get that sciatic pain treated but no one actually works out why they've got the sciatic pain in the first place. So, if I can use you as an example. Okay, so Stuart gets lower back pain and he has an uneven leg length. Now, he may have gone and seen allied health professional after allied health professional who treated the symptoms of the lower back, but it wasn't until someone actually corrected his leg length that we could actually stop the pain. Okay, um, with, <coughs> with Matt, he didn't have proper functioning muscles in his, in his backside, in his glutes, which meant when he functioned, <coughs> his back and his legs were doing more work and trying to compensate for his glutes not working. So what we do in rehabbing people to start off with is we isolate out the areas that aren't working correctly. Now with Rob, the first thing we did is we actually turned off his nervous system. We did what we call desensitize the nervous system because you can't be happily in pain. There's two nervous systems, there's your, system, there's your um, sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic. Sympathetic is your fight or flight and your parasympathetic is you're on the beach relaxed. Okay, pain is driven by sympathetic nervous system. Funnily enough, exercise drives your sympathetic nervous system. So this is why people who are in chronic pain don't like going and doing high intensity exercise because you're getting the overload of that nervous system. So what we do in this sort of exercise is we work in the parasympathetic nervous system and we turn that sympathetic nervous system off which then turns off the pain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
Just by actually stimulating the other nervous system. So you can't be relaxed and stressed at the same time. You can't be happy and depressed. Okay, so it's one or the other. It's just the way the body works. So you can take people and you can give them specific exercises to desensitize their nervous system, reduce the pain and even turn it off. A lot of this is then around isolating muscles out to getting them work and functioning correctly. So a lot of the time in back pain specifically, people's glute muscles or their backside muscles don't work or their deep inner core doesn't work. So what we're doing is we're actually ripping those out, getting them to work on their own and then in stage two we actually integrate them back into the body Sorry, to start to work together. So the body was never designed to work as an isolated unit, it was actually meant to work as a functional unit together. Okay, So what we do in stage one is we get things working and then in stage two is we start to bring it all together so it works as a team. And the body has what we call slings where it communicates with each other and we have different units that have to work alongside other muscles and we call them functional units. So a functional unit would be my back, my glutes and my hamstrings. Another functional unit would be my inner unit which is your TVA, your pelvic floor, so you ladies will know that, your diaphragm and your outer unit which is the big oblique muscles around the outside. Now, they have to work together and a lot of time in people they're not and hence why they're starting to get more pain. In this stage here we also focus on actually posturally retraining them, correcting their posture okay, and then strengthening them in correct posture. So we're now finding weaknesses in them, correcting those weaknesses and strengthening them so those weaknesses don't become a problem down the track. Okay, the third aspect that we move into is once we've got this working, and this is where we really are with Rob now, is we're actually doing what we call primal movement patterns. So everything we do in life is made up of seven movements. Okay, so we've got squat, lunge, step, bend, twist, push and pull. Once we get these functional units working correctly, we then get them working into these movement patterns. So we're teaching someone to be able to bend and twist, pick something up, bend and put it up on a shelf and getting all of those muscles and those slings working correctly so that you're not getting overloading in the spine, you're not getting dysfunction and you're not getting pain. Okay, so that's pretty much in a nutshell what we do. Okay, on the 23rd of September we're actually launching our, our, our back pain program officially with the Learn How to Stop Back Pain seminar and we're really talking to this brochure, the five steps to stop back pain. And these are five essential steps to prevent, reduce and stop back pain. And they're all on your table and what I'm inviting you to do is take as many as you like, hand them out to people, anyone who's got back pain. The other thing that I have here is I actually have some brochures on the seminar itself. Okay, so the door price today is two tickets to the seminar. Okay, and the deal is I'll give you two tickets if you promise me that the second ticket goes to someone who needs it. Okay, not someone who you can just bring along, but someone who actually needs to hear this message. Okay, so I'm challenging all of you that in your life you probably know someone who has back pain. Okay, seven out of ten people have back pain. And out of those 7 out of 10 people, 90% of them have a serious reoccurrence once a year that impacts their life and prevents them from being able to just live. Okay, And they're the people who I'd like to talk to. More importantly, if they're sick of it and they're ready to take steps to stop their back pain, they're the ones who need to come to the seminar. So I'd love for you to take some of these and hand them out to people. Don't just stick them on the counter, actually hand them to people and say, hey look, I know this guy, go have a look at his website, look at some testimonials and get yourself along to this because the reality is if you can have someone saying that, you've given them that back, their ability to play with their kids, that's the most rewarding thing you'll ever hear in your life. When he said that yesterday, I'm sitting there with tears in my eyes going, oh my God, you know, this is amazing. I've given back these, their kids' kids, their dad. And that's really what we do. I'd love to have, um, you know, you all come along. But more importantly, I'd love to have people come along who you think that I can help.